It is Seahawks Today, powered by Chad Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. You have questions. I have answers. We will answer them right now here on today's show. Before we do, though, I want to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. We're doing mailbag segments uh, a couple times a week now here on Seahawks Today, and they're a part of our live shows. So if you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, then you'll be alerted when we're live and you get your questions in to be a part of the mailbag. Go to youtube.com slash Seahawks TV to subscribe today. Be a real one, and we'll be so glad to have you here a part of our Seahawks Today family. First question in the mailbag today it comes from Oregon Ducks. Should the Seahawks sign an extra safety like Jonathan Abram? Well, here's the interesting thing for this uh, Seahawks team when it comes to looking at, you know, a guy like Jonathan Abram or maybe a, a few others here uh, as far as I'm concerned it, when it comes to the safety position here. This is something that I think a few weeks ago we would have said, yeah, maybe you look at Jonathan Abram or some of the other safeties on the market. But the way that Ryan Neal's played, Joey Blunt is coming back from injury here. I don't see the Seahawks making a move at the safety spot. Abram might be a guy worth considering, but I think the Seahawks feel pretty good about what they have at the safety spot. I don't, I don't see them uh, bringing on a guy like Abram. But nonetheless, thanks for the question, Oregon Ducks. Nick Fury, the birthday boy. Happy birthday, Nick. Writes in, hashtag Seahawks, hashtag Papa Seahawk. What are the best free agent targets for the Seahawks on both sides? How will we do the show Sunday since it's morning? Go Hawks, let's fly. I'll answer the latter first, and then uh, I'll get back to the beginning. we got a great show coming up on Sunday. It's going to be bright and early, you know, 6 a.m. on the West Coast. But being in Germany and everything, we got German beer involved. I think we might be doing some mimosa boots. It's going to be a great time. You'll want to be here. Seahawks today live uh, here on Sunday. It's guaranteed to be a good time. Don't miss out on that. So a few things in store. That's what we call teasing the biz. As far as the beginning of that goes, who are the best free agent targets for the Seahawks on both sides? Well, here's the deal. Seahawks don't have much money to spend. I mean, that's just reality at this point, right? Uh, cap space is kind of limited, and the Seahawks feel pretty good about what they have anyway. Remember, they didn't do anything at the trade deadline because they didn't have to. With that said, some of the best players out there, OBJ is out there. He could be a nice number three receiver. Don't necessarily know if he wants to come to Seattle necessarily. Will Fuller is still sitting around uh, as far as offensive players go. On the defensive side of the ball, that's where things are a little more limited. We mentioned, you know, Jonathan Abram was a, a possibility. He's a name that potentially comes to mind. But I, I just don't see Seattle making any sort of free agent moves uh, at this point in time, barring some injury of some sorts. But thanks for the question, Nick. AJ writes, any concerns with the long trip to Germany? Well, I'll say this. Tampa Bay has got a long trip, too. Now, theirs isn't quite as long as Seattle's is, but nonetheless, uh, I'll say in an ideal world, I would have liked that the Seahawks not have a situation where they go to Germany and then their bye week is taken up after the Germany game, right? In an ideal world, you don't have to make the Europe trip altogether, that you still stay stateside. And now you have this situation where you're going to Germany and part of your bye week is going to be taken up by just recovering from going all the way out to Germany. So do I have any concerns? I mean, it, it, it's just a lot of time away. A lot of time away that, you know, takes away from a normal bye week that teams typically have that are not making the international trips. And so you need that rest, need that time off, and you're not going to have as much as you would typically have in a normal bye week. So it's a big deal. You know, it's great for promoting the brand. You know, Pete Carroll's excited about it. Tom Brady was excited about it. I get why the NFL is doing it, but it doesn't necessarily benefit the players on this team when it comes to health and safety. Are you a fan of the Seahawks playing over in Germany? First time ever that any NFL team has played in Germany. 
If you are, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Let me know in the comments section if you're a fan of the Seahawks playing in Germany. Y for yes, in for no. Next question comes from uh, Juror. Hashtag Seahawks, what are your thoughts on drafting Grayson McCall to sit behind Geno for a year or two? Grayson McCall, quarterback at Coastal Carolina. I remember Grayson very specifically. I believe it was his first career start when he beat my Kansas Jayhawks back in 2020. So I'm playing person. Grayson McCall, very talented college quarterback. Credit where credit's due. He's a good player. But he's not that great of a passer. Very good runner. But I don't think that Grayson McCall's a good enough passer to play at this level. So, you know, we're going to be talking quarterbacks, I'm sure, for the next few months, uh, potentially for the Seahawks drafting. But Grayson McCall, for me, is not an NFL quarterback. Now, who knows? Maybe months from now, years from now, you check back the tape, and this turns into something where it's motivation for Grayson McCall or whatever. But at this point in time, McCall is not a good enough passer to be an NFL quarterback. So I don't see that happening, but crazier things have happened before. Today's show is presented by BetUS. And BetUS is offering a 125% deposit bonus when you use the promo code Seahawks125 at checkout. Put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free at chatsports.com slash bets. And this week, since the Seahawks won, we're offering a great deal. And this comes straight from us here at Chat Sports. Out of the goodness of our hearts, we are giving you the opportunity to get a free NFL jersey. Here's how. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code Seahawks125, sign up and deposit $100 and get that 125% deposit bonus, place bets on any game, and, it, and then email us, jerseychatsports.com, we're going to get you a jersey. That's how it works. So if you take anything away from today's show and want this to be as simple as possible, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Seahawks125, put $100 down, and email us, jersey at chatsports.com, and you could get Charles Cross jersey, Geno Smith jersey, Jordan Brooks. We got options. Email us for details, jersey at chatsports.com, for more. This is not a gimmick. We're dead serious about this, folks. Get yours now, jersey at chatsports.com. Dustin writes, who would Seattle draft in 2023? Another draft question. Great. Thanks. Uh, Dustin. As far as the uh, draft goes, looking forward to next year, I think when you look at this Seahawks team that uh, they're going to continue to build, I think, on the defensive line. I would expect the uh, defensive line to get a couple more pieces potentially to build upon for that group. I think also when you look at this Seahawks team that um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them get interior linemen. Look, you already have your book in tackles for the foreseeable future with Abe and with Charles, but you could use some help with those guard and center spots in the future. And then, of course, wondering about the quarterback position. Here's what I wonder when it comes to that quarterback position, folks, is, as I've said before, you don't have to draft a quarterback don't have to but what you could do is if there is somebody you do like you don't have to rush them on the football field they can sit behind geno smith and wait for their day to come potentially so those to me are the ones that come to mind early but we'll see exactly what they do but thanks for the question there dustin that fat rat do you think al woods could retire after this season next year he would hit age 36 yeah I think it's possible. I think anything is possible uh, as far as that goes. When you get into that age, um, I mean, yeah. You think about it. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow, right? Every day is a gift. We can't take this life for granted at all. And when you're a guy like Al Woods, who's had, you know, a, a really good football career, I think you look back and, you know, with, with his health and, you know, with all the stuff we know about CTE and everything now, um, that you value that time of what you have. And so 36, I think that's, you look back and you say that you you got a lot out of your career. He could be back next year and still have 
a lot to play with. But when it comes to retirement, yeah, I think that's certainly possible with him and, and wish him nothing but the best in whatever decision he makes there. Temper wants to know, is Geno better than Tom Brady right now? Well, there's an interesting discussion there. So, Geno Smith, Tom Brady. Um, I'll say this much. So, Tom Brady, and, and I like Tom Brady. I'm a, I'm a Tom Brady fan, so don't hold that against me, folks. But Tom Brady, I think much is being overblown about being on the decline this year. People are saying that, he has kind of, you know, fallen apart and that he's not the quarterback that he once was. Well, the reality is the Bucks do not have a run game. And Tom Brady is being very limited in what he can do in that offense. Is Geno better than Tom Brady? He might be. I think we could have an answer on Sunday, potentially, as far as that question goes. Better quarterback this year. Is it Geno Smith or is it Tom Brady type GS for Geno Smith. Type TB for Tom Brady. Let me know who the better quarterback this year is, Geno Smith or Tom Brady. Ashley writes in, do you think we will keep Jamal Adams next year, or do you think we will get rid of him? So that's an interesting question uh, when it comes to Jamal Adams, because we know Jamal Adams is going to be out for the year. That's a situation that's been unfortunate, and he's dealt with a lot of injuries ever since he came to the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, now with Jamal Adams, uh, you know, not playing, we wonder if he's played his last game as a Seattle Seahawk. And here's the deal. The way that his contract is written up, there's no benefit for Seattle to move on from uh, Jamal Adams, that they would lose too much money, potentially speaking. Uh, if they were to release Jamal Adams. Nobody's going to want to trade for Jamal Adams with all the injuries that he's endured. So I think Jamal Adams is going to be back next year. Uh, Unless somehow somebody out of left field comes up with an offer that the Seahawks can't refuse, I I just don't see how Jamal Adams is not back next year. I think he'll be in a Seahawks uniform one way or the other. Chris writes in, happy birthday, Nick. We mentioned that earlier. It's – Commenter Nick Fury's birthday today. Hashtag Seahawks. Will the Seahawks have three or more sacks Sunday? I'm hoping Tom Brady uh, sees a whole bunch of pressure. So I was looking at the statistics with uh, with Tom Brady. And Tom Brady, I believe, right now is within like the top five when it comes to least amount of time sacked this year. And a big part of that with Tom Brady of why that statistic is, is because Tom Brady has such a quick release that he gets the football off and he's been so good in the short passing game over the years. That's what plays to his strength. And so I'll say this, you know, three sacks, that that might be that might be a reach as far as that goes, of hoping that they get to three sacks. It'd be nice to see, but it, it would be something else. I don't know if Tom Brady is going to allow the Seahawks to get three sacks on him. But uh, I would guess no, but I wouldn't rule it out. Still flying rights. Is this a fluke or the Seahawks legit? Okay, here's here's what I define as a fluke, okay? If you win two in a row against good teams and they're close, but then go on, you know, losing streak, lose games, whatever, that's a fluke. When you've won three in a row – or four in a row now, rather, and you've dominated those games. There's nothing fluky about that. There's no fluke here at all, okay? The Seahawks are absolutely legit. Too legit to quit, actually. So, yes, I'm all in. I'm buying this Seahawks team. Um, They're the favorites in the division. I think they're going to be a playoff team. It's going to be great to see. Um, I'm buying this Seahawks team. Are you guys buying or selling this Seahawks team as a legit team? Are they good or not? Let me know in the comment section. Type B for buy. Type S for sell. Manor Pitt says, if we play Dallas in Dallas in the playoffs, what would be the strengths as well as the challenge for Seattle? So, uh, I would love the idea of playing Dallas in the playoffs, by the way, because we know how the Cowboys are. How about them Cowboys? Ha, 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 when it comes to the postseason. Um, to me, I would welcome that possibility to make that road trip. Um, 
But as far as strengths and challenges go, um, I look at that uh, Dallas team. Dak Prescott still a very good quarterback. I know that he's been injured some this year, but I think any time you face – uh, a good quarterback like that, that's always a challenge in its own right. We've seen Tony Pollard and Zeke. Uh, Tony Pollard's kind of in the better back there. You know, just trying to find the balance of both stopping a good passing game and a good running game. Um, they don't have great receivers, though. So I could see that as an advantage for Tariq Wool and Kobe Bryant and Mike Jackson and those guys. Um, but when it comes to defensively, that Dallas defense – is really good. They're as tough as any defense in the league at this point right now. I think for Seattle, what you would try to do, ideally, against this Dallas team is try to run up tempo and challenge Dallas to a shootout of sorts. To me, I think that that's your best point of action is uh, to, to play a pace game. See if they can go pound for pound for you. Because right now, I don't think Dallas could go pound for pound, quite frankly with uh, that Seahawks team if they were going to try to make it a shootout of some sort. So something to keep in mind there. Thanks for the question. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything in between at Tyler Jones Live, talking about your Seahawks on all of those social media platforms. One more question coming in, uh, actually, before we go from our guy Mark Sanchez, the legend himself, writes, uh, at Seahawks, will Shane Waldron be a head coach next season, or should the Seahawks make him head coach in waiting if he gets that offer. Um, Shane Waldron's done a good job. I like Shane Waldron, and I've seen improvement from what he's done, comparatively speaking, to that Niner game, which I thought he called a bad game there. But this is the NFL. Nobody does coaching waiting. I mean, I think New England tried that with Josh McDaniels behind Belichick, and then he took the Raiders' job. So, I mean... Whenever the time comes for Pete Carroll, when he's ready to retire, when he's ready to step away, the Seahawks just need to do what they can to find the best coach they can. Whether it's Shane Waldron, whether it's whoever it may be, I don't think you hold a spot for Shane Waldron and tell him that he's the coach in waiting. Shane Waldron's name could come up. He certainly could. And uh, I think he's done a really good job. But I wouldn't necessarily just hold a spot and tell him you're the coach in waiting necessarily or move on from – P. Carroll to bring in Shane Waldron either. I think he'd just let the process play itself out. But nonetheless, thanks for the question there, Mark.